beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see that it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone, so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed and stay blessed. In your presence, Lord, I seek your face. I seek your face. Let me sing it one more time down at your feet. Down at your feet.
Jesus left you with us to teach us and when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide us into all truth he will cause us to see and to know and to comprehend spiritual things we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity Lord we bless you may the spirit of the living God not ashamed to declare how helpless we are without you. You are the fountain of wisdom. It's in your light that we see life. We bless the name of the Lord for his glorious presence in this place. The presence that can change. You have changed the stories of people. Lord, day and night we hear testimonies of the hand of God the wonder walking power you have made sinners to come into the fold many have been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit you have anointed men and women you have broken habits you have broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder you have opened for us the two leaf gates and caused us to walk in freedom see what you've done with our lives oh God you have taken the ordinary things and you have made wonders out of our lives Lord we acknowledge the way you transform people in this place it's mighty it can only happen by the spirit you're giving many testimonies of transformation healing definition of their lives. You are setting men apart for the things that you will be doing. Lord, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. These are not the works of men. It is the presence of the living God walking in the midst of his people. And so we choose to say thank you. Hallelujah. bless your name and I pray that tonight it will not be different change somebody your people have come from their homes from other states the 
except you help us tonight, we cannot help ourselves. But we trust the power of your spirit, that great spirit of the living God. Open to us the bread of the spirit. Grant us access into the deep things of you. Let the word equip us, prepare us, separate us, make a wonder out of our lives. We are available. We give you all the praise for the glory of your name. That Jesus will be glorified in our lives. We're not interested in shadows. We want the substance. You are worthy, worthy of my praise. You're the King of kings, Lord of lords. This is our prayer, Lord. Let your kingdom reign in my life. You're the Lord of Lords. Tonight, let your kingdom reign in our hearts. Adonai.
Spirit of God, I feel your touch in my life. Holy Ghost, you are the Spirit of God. You are the Spirit of God. I feel your touch in my life. Holy Ghost, comfort her. Make my life comfortable. Teach her. Teach me all I need to know. You are the Spirit of God. You are the Spirit of God. I feel your touch in my life. Oh, Lord. you are the Spirit of God. You are the Spirit of God. I feel, I feel your, your touch in my life. life. Oh, 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 I will sing of the wonders of your love. I will sing of your love. I will sing of the wonders of your love. And I will forever sing your praise. Listen. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word. That's why, your oh Lord, I will forever sing your praise. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word. That's why I will forever sing your praise. I will see, I will see of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. Bless you. Let the name of the Lord be exalted. Blessed is the Lord Most High. Let the bride of the Lord say, come. We will give you no rest, O oh Lord, until you inhabit the praises of your people. And you turn your Jerusalem into a holy place.
Just soak in his glory for a minute. His mighty presence. God is healing, healing sicknesses, revealing anointing in this place. Shalom, 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 Jerusalem, shalom, 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 shalom. Shalom, 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 Jerusalem. Shalom, shalom. Koinonia, peace be to you. When Messiah comes to take us home, may his praise be found in you. Shalom, shalom. Jerusalem, yeah. I prophesy peace to you. I prophesy peace to you when Messiah comes to take us home. May his praise be found in you. I speak to every storm in this place. Shalom, Shalom, Jerusalem. Peace be to you. Now that Messiah is in this place, he's come to take it away. Let his praise be found in you. I'm prophesying to you. Shalom, epakatabalataba. Shalom, koinonia, the bride of Christ. Peace be to you. Peace be to you. this be a place of peace. Let it be a place of power. Let it be a place of breakthrough. Let it be a place of intimacy. Bless his name. You may not realize what has happened to you.
Come to the end of ourselves. Take over, Jehovah. We have touched the end of ourselves. Take over now, Jehovah. We have come to the end of ourselves. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We have come to the end of ourselves. So take over, take over. We have come to the end of ourselves. Take over, take over. We have come to the end of ourselves. Can you personalize it? Take over, Lord. Take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, yeah. take over. We have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have come to the end of ourselves. Just the voices. Sing it from your heart. Come on. Take over. Take over. Lord, we have come to the end of ourselves. Take over. When you come to the end of yourself, then you will see his glory. It's a powerful song of dedication. You will always rejoice when you come to the end of yourself. That's when flesh dies and you release the spirit. Hey, take over. Yeah. Lord, we have come to the end of ourselves. Take over. Take over. We have come to the end of ourselves. share in these few minutes, I pray from my heart that it will change you and set you on fire. I pray that it will change you. I pray that it will change you and do something remarkable in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's get to the word of God. Bless you. It's good to have everyone around. Make sure you have something to write. The presence of God is mighty in this place. Hallelujah. I want to teach on something very powerful. I want to share with you a very big secret tonight. And for as many who will consider it to be valuable. I pray that many years from now it will make you a sign and a wonder. Because I am aware by now that not everybody is really interested in the things of the spirit. Just leave her alone. Hallelujah. There will be a lot of impartations tonight because of what I'm about to teach. Hallelujah. I want you to be sensitive. Open your eyes, will you open your ears, and then you'll understand that his presence is here. Open your eyes, if you open your ears, 
to teach tonight on the price for an extraordinary anointing. Never, never trivialize what you're about to hear. I, I'm here to preach my heart to you tonight. And I pray that somebody will take this seriously. May this message set somebody on fire. May this message answer the question of somebody's heart. The price for an extraordinary anointing. Mm. Hallelujah. I've always wondered why certain people in this life seem to be unusually extraordinary. Hallelujah. Why certain sportsmen were better than others. Why certain musicians and artists were better than others. Why certain preachers, men and women of God. What brought the power and the anointing of the spirit so mightily upon their lives? When you read through church history, you will see an archive of men that walked like gods upon the earth. Now there were others who did nice, great things, little things here and there, but there were others who were too extraordinary to be neglected. They shook cities single-handedly. There was, there was such a degree of the demonstration of the Holy Spirit upon their lives. Hallelujah. And I made up my mind years ago that my life was not going to be extraordinary. My life was not going to be normal. Sorry. I made up my mind years ago that I was going to live an extremely extraordinary life. Hallelujah. I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, if you have done these things with the people that have gone ahead of us, and yet you said there is a generation that will do more. I want to be that generation. Every time I picked up my Bible and I read the things that the word of God said would happen, he said, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he also do and greater works. And I carried my Bible and said, Lord, do you really mean this? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I began to study the life of extraordinary people. I have spent a major part of my life studying extraordinary people in every area of life. Every area. Finance, ministry, leadership. What made them so extraordinary? Because I don't want to be a mediocre. Jesus was born in a manger. But when he was leaving heaven, there was a crowd to celebrate his departure. And I'm very disturbed, and I must say this, at the complacency that is upon especially preachers in the body of Christ. There is a very low standard that many men and women of God, especially around this country, have set for themselves. There is no pressure to go the extra mile and do amazing things for the kingdom. Hallelujah. When I listen to certain preachers, the presence of God that came out of their lives were amazing. It was compelling. You could not deny that these people knew the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? Very, very powerful. And one time I listened to William Branham. When I listened to his message, I was shaking. And the Holy Spirit told me, Abel, though dead, yet speaketh. 
What kind of anointing did men like Elisha carry that although they were dead, a dead body meandered that place and suddenly jacked up? Are there such people in the earth today? Are you listening to me? Am I challenging somebody? For desperate people do desperate things and we're pressing in. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. For desperate people do desperate things and we're pressing on. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. Help me sing. There's gotta be more than this. We are the desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. We are the desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. Cause I'm tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. Listen, there's got to be more than what we're watching on our television. Are you listening to me? There's got to be more than what we celebrate as ministry and power today. There's got to be more. This cannot be all of God. Certain people have become examples to let us know that there are possibilities that are obtained in God. It's just that the standard is high. The Bible says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? He lives in the hill and whoever will climb there will access some things. He said he shall receive a reward from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. I studied Ezekiel 47 and it challenged me. The Bible says out of the east side of the temple a river came out and he said an angel measured a thousand cubits and it was to my ankles. That's a level. That's a measure of the anointing. But he didn't stop there. He said he measured another thousand cubits and then it was to my knees. And the man would have chosen to stop there, but he said, I will go for more. And he measured a thousand cubits. And he was to his loins. And he said, although this is great, by now you are a celebrity, you are on every television, but he said, there is still more. And the Bible says he measured a thousand cubits. And it was a river. A, an overflowing river. And the Bible says, wherever that river went, the fish that was dead would come alive. Hallelujah. My anthem every time is that there is more. There is more. If you're a lukewarm person who does not have any pressure to press, you won't be my friend. You won't like me. My life will offend you. The price for an extraordinary anointing. I made certain vows with my life. That I was going to leave a mark upon this earth. Before I go to be with the Lord or he comes to find me working. I made up my mind that I was not just going to be that preacher with a nice congregation. And just having people. And join the rat race of preachers fighting themselves and doing things as if the anointing has finished. Quarreling and writing things about them. No! That kind of life is for people who have refused to press higher. Hallelujah. See, let me tell you something. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is God's energy. The anointing is God's ability to do work. Just like in physics, we define energy or we define power as the ability to do work per time. That's the definition of the anointing. The power of the Holy Ghost resident in a man that causes the man to produce extraordinary results. The Bible says in Isaiah 10, 27, it says, it shall come to pass in that day. Which day? The day you are interested enough to enter that dimension with the Spirit. That the burden shall be lifted from off thy neck and the yoke from thy shoulder and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. There are many preachers that go into ministry without the anointing. Many people trying to work for God. Many people trying to be great without the anointing. 
You have no ministry without the anointing. The anointing of the spirit is God's agency. His ability that can be resident in a man. Causing that man to do extraordinary things. And if that ability is not in you, you cannot pretend it's there when it's not there. Because it speaks. Hallelujah. Every time I watch television, I get blessed, but I get disturbed in my spirit. When I see the satisfaction that is upon men of God as they preach, in my mind I'm saying, is this, was this the whole vision that they saw when they began with God? If no, what happened on the way? And then one time the Lord began to speak to me about the extraordinary anointing. And the Lord told me something that shocked me. He said, son, it is not up to me. It is entirely up to you to determine how far you want to go in the anointing. Many people think it's just God. He brings it whenever he wants. And if God likes you, he will just give it to you. If anybody has preached that to you, I'm telling you right now, right now, that is not true. Psalms 89 says, I have found my servant David. He had to make himself available. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. Hallelujah. Every time we watch extraordinary people during the Olympic, the attention of the whole world were on a few who did extraordinary things. Their age, their gender, their race, their background, notwithstanding. The world has always stood in honor of extraordinary people. Ordinary people have not done anything to the world. When they give people Nobel Prize, it's because they did extraordinary things. Hallelujah. And I want to challenge you tonight that there is a dimension in God that you can press into and you will access not just an anointing, an extraordinary anointing. There are many people who claim to be prophets in this country and you see that they, they are really called but they have not contended to those dimensions in God. There are prophets who look like pastors or deacons. No pressure to contend for the deep things of the spirit. I was studying the gospels and I started crying. You know why I cried? Because in Bible times, all people needed to do was to locate Jesus Christ or any environment where he was around. Whether or not they would be healed was not the issue. They knew that once they saw Jesus Christ, that was it. Powerful dimension of grace. At what level in the church will people say, all I need to do, take me to that place. When I get there, I will find God. When I get there, no matter what the problem is, there must be a solution. Right now, to get to a place where a man of God is, is only the first question answered. The second question is to hope. Hope that at least God will attend to me. And every time this is my cry, I say, Lord, don't send me if I'm going to be an ordinary person. Hallelujah. Someone spoke to me one day and said, Josh, I think you need to go on air. I said, me? I will never go on air until I have a message for the body of Christ. Are you hearing me? I'm not going to go on air and have somebody scroll my channel and say, wow, he's a nice man of God next. No, no, no. There's got to be something extraordinary. This is what I, I made up my mind that we'll never officially begin to record koinonia messages until there was something that was substantial enough for the body of Christ to have. There are many people writing books and tapes that are empty. They have no power and no ability. They are just psychological jargons. No power to change people. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Bible says, with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says that he had the spirit without measure. And he went about doing good. And healing all they that were oppressed of the devil. Acts 10.38.
I made up my mind that I was going to explore. See, can I tell you the truth? As far as I'm concerned, I've not started ministry yet. I feel very sad when I see a lot of people. They don't say I've been five years in ministry, seven years. I tell them, keep quiet. What is ministry? Ministry is representing God, being an ambassador. How much? What have you done? What mark have you made? When I begin ministry, the world will know. The Bible says John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing. Many people just get up, they start churches, they gather people, they have no message. They have no nothing. What do you have that has not been heard before? The Bible says there is a path which no fowl knoweth, and a path which the feet of the lion has not trodden. Many men of God, what is happening in this country is just a repetition, copy and paste of spiritual things. There is no new. The Bible says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. See, behold, I do a new thing. Hallelujah. Nelson Mandela became sick and he kept the world at a standstill. Christians, non-Christian, and everybody was praying. When Obama came, he had to go and visit him. Listen, this is, this is amazing. What made him an extraordinary leader? My, my first challenge for you tonight is that you must refuse to be ordinary in life. I want to challenge you. You must refuse. It's a determination. It's a decision. I refuse to be extraordinary. Call it pride. I don't care. Hallelujah. There is a level where you can gain hold of an extraordinary anointing. It will produce an extraordinary ministry. It will produce an extraordinary life. Kenneth Hagin of blessed memory. A man who lived an extraordinary life. He had such a, a mighty anointing upon him. William Branham. I watched the video of Jaco. And they brought a lady who had cancer. Are you following me now? It was, it was a growth. It was swollen. I watched it. It's not like they told me. This guy held it and peeled it away. He was even sitting on a chair. He held it, peeled the cancer away. No blood. He was showing people. What is our boasting? What is our bragging for? I made up my mind I will never officially celebrate my birthday until I have a reason to celebrate. Birthdays is not a celebration of the day you were born. It was a celebration of, for what you are doing, what you were called to do, what you are living for. Are you listening to me? When I watch the videos of these people, I, I get broken. Mighty men. William Branham would move and because of the degree of anointing that was upon him, a hollow will move together with him. Ketun Kuman was so full of the Holy Ghost. She carried the anointing to a point that one time on stage she had crossed the stage yet she was still floating. She didn't even realize it. Who through faith subdued kingdoms? Who are these men? Who are this strange breed of people that defied the ordinary status quo of their days and told themselves they were going to press? The difference between extraordinary, listen to me please, the difference between extraordinary and ordinary is that word, extra. Hallelujah. Every time I want to counsel people, I just say, Lord, are these people going to gather and I'll just waste their time? Or will they really receive something? Can I tell you something? The body of Christ is so frustrated Many people are frustrated because preachers make a lot of mouth about things they have no anointing to defend. Hallelujah. A lot of preachers come and we brag and we make all kinds of noise. Oh, if God doesn't heal you, you don't have faith. Blah, 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 blah. And now the sick people come and they go back. And then they run to herbalists. And we, have, we carry our big mouths and we criticize them. 
when the harbalist in a village is doing what a preacher has refused to do and people are desperate for help, they will do anything, including leaving your church or your ministry and they will find solutions. Are you listening to me? Jesus climbed the mountain, a crowd followed him there. Jesus went to the wilderness, a crowd followed him there. He was in a room, the Bible says a whole city came and filled there. Men who knew that they were going to get substance. There is a lot of wastage happening in the body of Christ. Men and women of God just joking around and playing around. And the, the circumference of all what we call anointing. The moment a man of God's dream is to get to the point where you can touch somebody or blow air and somebody falls. It's enough demonstration to people that you are anointed. People fall down, get up and clean themselves. Nothing changes. Hallelujah. There are certain meetings in my life. I entered some of those meetings just once, but I will never forget. Hallelujah. Never forget. T.L. Osborne entered only one meeting. One meeting of William Branham. Just one. And it set him on fire forever. Just one. I told God, I said, Lord, the deadline for transformation in any life in Koinonia is two meetings. Two meetings. Every time I pray, I said, Lord, let it not be that somebody will come for Koinonia at least twice and not be changed. And you ask the person, how was service? He said, wow, it was nice. But that somebody will come and at the end of it, he cannot even talk. The person is just on his way going and you're saying, what happened? He said, I can't, I can't begin to describe. The imparta I don't know if it was impartation I got or revelation I got. I don't know. I know that I got something. You'll be like a snake that swallowed something else. It can't move until after some days where you know that God is in this place. There are people seated here who are sick. There are people who are oppressed. women of God feel it's not an issue. And, and you know, shame on we preachers to an extent that whenever you see people being delivered and free, men of God begin to get angry and criticize. This is how much we are not even interested in the agenda of God. Someone gets free, someone gets delivered. See, let me tell you something. I made up my mind. The Bible says, he who walks with the wise shall be what? He who walks with the great shall be what? He who walks with the extraordinary shall be what? I love everybody, but I will not follow everybody. I am determined to make sure that a lot will be done for the kingdom of God in my life. This is why there is no satisfaction. I've had one or two awards that were given to me. You will never find them on my table. Those things are deceitful. Very deceitful. Award that a few people just came together and said, take, you did this and that. You now place it and you are smiling and it's lying to you. See, when I was in secondary school, it was in a local government where, you know, many people were not even serious with their studies. So we're the best, we're the best school in that local government. What we call local champion. If we came for debate in your school, just start crying. By that standard. Hallelujah. Until we made up our minds one day to visit a school that was used to competing with people going state by state. That day, they showed us that the ceiling of somebody else can be the foundation of the next building. Yeah. Hallelujah. When I came back, listen, when I came back from that debate, I was ashamed of myself. I ran to the state library. I had been the best student in my class until I tried writing jam math. 
After five hours, I got four. Four. One, two, three, four. I checked the back of Jam Brochure. And they said there were certain people that got 300 and something. I said, Joshua Selman, you are joking. Many of us have lived in circles that have lied to us too much. We think the whole world is like our little community. Hallelujah. That's how many men of God are. They, they have surrounded themselves by, with psychophants and liars who make them feel they have every anointing in the world. Then one day you go and try something that you don't have grace for and you receive a root shock. Then you begin to say it's not true. This thing didn't work for me. Anybody that is doing it is not of God. This is fake. Shut up. That you are lazy and you are not pressing does not mean everybody has refused to press. There are people who will not stop. Are you listening to me? The price for an extraordinary anointing. There can be more than what you have seen. There can be more. There can be more. Many of us stopped pursuing God the day somebody fell down under the anointing. You don't know whether it was you or it was the person's prayer. You just know it happened around you. From that day, you were convinced. Whenever you go for meetings and they are ministering to people, you are waiting for them to say, ministers, come and lay hands. They say, ministers, you get up. What do you have? What do you have? How many? How many of it? He said, listen. He said, what do you have in your house? He said, I won't lie. I have something, but it's little. Sometimes you need to accept that you have, but what you have is not enough. The woman said, I have oil, but it's in a small cruise. The prophet said, all right, let me show you something that can expand the oil for you. She never would have believed that there can be more. Hallelujah. I get very, very, I get very disturbed when I see people go for meetings and to worsen the case, you want to see the disorganization of men of God wait until the anointing begins to break out in the meeting. Every man of God's body is itching him. Everybody wants to hold the mic. God has not finished, so just wait. There, there, are, there are some people there at the back, at the back. All these, all these things we are doing. For 10 minutes you are talking. You are just, it's like starting a generator. Go and sit down. There are certain people, Catherine Kuman, before she got to the venue of the meeting, kilometers away, people started falling under the anointing. This is how they knew Catherine Kuman was coming. One time she finished the meeting and they were pressing her and they had to follow her through a kitchen door. The moment they opened the door, all the chefs, all of them were under the anointing until she passed. She was not praying. This was her default state. Hallelujah. Am I challenging you tonight? Sometimes when people call me to come and minister, as soon as I finish the ministration, I don't even want to hear any comments because I have to run. In my mind, I've left Zaria. In my mind, I've left Nigeria. I will not be fooled. The future of ENI is in that letter I, international. If you think what we have now is enough to feed the world, go and sit down. How many of you have seen people produce poster? And when you are seeing it on the laptop, you think that's the best poster you have produced. It's when you print it out and paste it, you see that it's as ordinary as the ones around. I refuse to be ordinary. There is a realm in God. Listen, can I tell you, when you hit that realm, you will start resting. You have entered the Sabbath of greatness. You will rest. Until you get to the seventh day, do not rest. I'm going to share with you four keys. Number one, This is not what I'm just preaching. These are keys that I've made up my mind that they will be part of my life. Can I tell you something? Look at me. God is challenging some of you tonight. Some of you have not backslided, but you have, not, you have stopped growing. You've not backslided, but you are, there are many preachers in Nigeria that have stopped growing. They've not gone back, but they are in the same realm for a long time. 
It's just because where they have gotten to is, is substantially great. And it has been able to achieve one or two things. May your life produce a wonder that the world has not seen. May your life be the vehicle that God will reveal the more part of him that many people have not seen. Number one. You want to have an extraordinary anointing. The first price to pay is the price of consecration. The price of consecration. I will run very fast. Joshua 3 verse 5. The price of consecration. You don't hear this message is preached in church. Many people don't care. When I talk of consecration, I'm not just talking about run away from ladies. No, no, no. That's not even what I'm talking about. Consecration. To consecrate means to set apart. Consecration requires absolute surrender. Joshua 3 verse 5. Joshua 3 verse 5. If you want the Lord to do mighty things through your life, can we read it? One to read. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves. If you do that, what will happen? Tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. You want to see wonders in your life? The first key is the price of consecration. Consecration requires absolute surrender. Everybody say absolute surrender. You will never have the extraordinary anointing when you have your own agenda. You just want to use God's anointing to do your own agenda. Uh -uh. When God calls you, his first assignment is to kill you. You die to yourself, to your ambitions. Listen, you do not know the degree of surrender that brings authentic power and anointing. How many of you remember that gentleman, Sadiq Ibrahim? Some of you will remember him. He was right here in Koinonia. This guy wanted to be, he was in a group called Highlanders in Port Harcourt. Very serious occultic group. And he wanted the power of invincibility. He wanted to be able to do great things. When he met the Habalist, the Habalist told him, you have to consecrate yourself. For three days and three nights, he was lying down in a graveyard. His eyes did not see any man. I'm telling you how the devil gives people power. Three days, he said in the night, he will see people come out of graves and move. And you were not supposed to shift. They will touch him. It's a, many of you do not know that the anointing comes with a price. That's why you see, when you talk against a man who is truly anointed, whether you are right or wrong, God will punish you. Are you listening to me? Absolute surrender. Consecration requires enduring the pain of being different. Oh, it's painful to be different. Let me tell you. It's painful to ride a different, a different plane of life when everybody is going this way, when this is their definition of success. Moses was in the backside for 40 years. When his age mates were ruling in Egypt, he left the luxury of Egypt to prepare for an extraordinary ministry. 40 years! At the end of it, he came back to Egypt. He said, I'm ready. Oh, you can know you are ready. And it will not be pride. You can know you are ready. There is a time called the season of appearance. Are you, are you listening to me? Years ago, I hope I'll be able to share a few stories today about myself. Years ago, when I started preparing when the Lord showed me the visions of the extraordinary things I'll be doing. In my mind, I said, Lord, will people believe these things? And then the Lord began, sometimes the Lord will hold me in a room. Three days have not come out. My eyes have not seen the light. Three days. I will stay there just praying. Sometimes sleeping, I will wake up and I will lie down. And a mist like a cloud will literally come into the room. 
like the shape of a man. A real mist, I'm not talking of some metaphysics hallucination. If you are seeing it, you are seeing it. If it's like it is not there, you are either seeing it. This is Sam. This is music director. Hallelujah. I had very strange experiences. And I knew that this was a preparation for an extraordinary ministry. Many of you, this is what has been happening to you. Hallelujah. But nobody has told you. They've not encouraged you to know. Are you, are you listening to me? Many of you, you don't even know. And you are not serious because you started joining people. You now want to run and go and start a church or a fellowship. You've not even done anything. Ella, you'll be my secretary. Matilda, you'll be the PA. You are the one who will bath me. You are the one who will dress me. You will be going to the restaurant for me. Say, God gave me a commission. He said, now my son, arise and raise me a generation. Sit down. He said, arise from his perspective. See, let me tell you something about the word of God. God speaks from the realm of eternity. Everybody say eternity. He speaks from the realm of eternity. There is no time. So when the word comes to you, it comes with such a strong urgency, you think you should get up and go immediately. You must sit down and find the time component of every prophecy. That's why when prophets heard from God, they said, according to the time of life. Are, are you following me? Thank you, Jesus. It's painful to stand out. Listen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's painful to stand out. It's painful to be unusual. It's painful to be controversial. If you are not ready, forget about an extraordinary anointing. These are strange and rare people. That's why many people cannot make it to that list. They are too conscious of themselves. You must die to yourself to carry an extraordinary anointing. They will talk about you. They, we are speaking about Satan and Jesus at the same time. Two extremes. No matter, you will have to be in between two of them. Different in your life. Different in your mindset. There are ways they do things in your house. Now you make up your mind and say, no way. These sacrifices and this idolatry and the rest, count me out. This is not going to be part of my life. I'm preparing for an extraordinary life. And people look at you. Say, so this thing has been there for how many years? Until the reward comes, you will look foolish. So let it not be strange to you. When you get to this realm, you will die to yourself. Literally. Everybody say the price of consecration. Many people do not like this. You know what? See, one of the biggest problems with the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, especially the American church, and now it's coming into Nigeria, we love comfort too much. Are you listening to me? The Holy Spirit is called the comforter. But listen, I need you to know that any sensible man knows that you don't get comfort from day one. When they give birth to a child, the first thing he receives is a slap. That's a sign to show that he's alive. Are you hearing me? Many people want pampering. We have built churches that want pampering. You say something that is striking. People say, we don't like this kind of preaching. No? We'll stop sowing into this ministry. And the man of God said, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll think of how to, to arrange it. May Koinonia never become the place that will water down truth because we are looking for money. Hallelujah. Everybody say the price of consecration. Before David was anointed, Psalm 89 said, I have found. Do you know what it means for God to find a man? The psalmist said, where can we hide from your presence? Yet God is saying, finally I found you. Because many people just want comfort. We want to use the anointing of God to accomplish our own agenda. And so the first thing is you must die to yourself and die to your agenda. I was listening to Benny Hinn. He was talking to some youth. And he was telling them, he said, look, 
You people do not know the price that brought this level of anointing to my life. He said, I don't know the, name of, the names of footballers. I don't know the names of music artists. He said one time his son asked him to take him to a basketball place. He said when he got there and he saw people jumping, he could not understand what they were enjoying. The anointing will change you. It will make you strange. People will say, you didn't used to be like this. Where has your social life gone to? What happened? You will find it in the future. Give it up now. There are pastors who do visitation from Sunday to Sunday. Even Sunday morning, they quickly visit a rich man's house before they run to church. And then they believe that they are going to get an extraordinary ministry. And there are many people now want methods. Young Gicho went to preach somewhere. He pastors one of the largest churches in the world. Hallelujah. And many Americans just sat down with their notepad. They believed he was going to give them 31 guaranteed methods. You know, this is what we like now. Do this. Add A to B to C. This will happen. Young Gicho came up. He doesn't speak English too well. Paraphrasing. He said, you people don't pray. You are not serious. You just sit down. You want the anointing. And he went and sat down. That was the end of his message. It was a prophetic rebuke. Authentic prophetic Bible type prophetic rebuke. Hallelujah. That was the message. He who had an ear in that meeting should hear. And go back to the secret place. We like methods. Right now we read all kinds of psychological books. Unbelievers are writing books to govern church ministry. How to attract a crowd. 20 quick ways. Guaranteed. And many gullible men of God who are lazy, just get up. You see them watching CDs. You would think it's something that will provoke them. A motivational speaker sits down. He says, when you come, start with a story. When you start with a story, use an example. When you do that, do this and that. You tried it, it didn't work because you are in Nigeria. Everybody say it, Nigeria. Nigerians have not been trained to tolerate nonsense. We are coming out from witchcraft straight. We are looking for something authentic. You don't come and tell people these jargons and jokes. They will manage it for two days. They will laugh. We'll, we'll, when it gets bad, they will call you and say, Pastor, I sow the seed. I prayed it's not working. If you don't respond to me by next week, you will see me in your church again. Hallelujah. The price of consecration. Listen. Every great man knows that you must give up something to go up. Did you hear what I'm saying? You must give up something to go up. Politicians know this. By 1 a.m., you are sleeping. A politician is in a herbalist house just to get little political office. What has made the body of Christ so lazy? I believe in seed faith. But let me tell you the truth. If you want an extraordinary life, it's beyond money. Are you listening to me? It's even beyond impartation. A time will come you must dig your own well. Your customized dealing with the spirit. When you get it, you will know those who are having what is not it. If you are the best student in your class and you see the dullest student getting 99, you know something happened. Because you know what you are doing that makes you the best. Hallelujah. Many believers cannot detect error because they themselves have not entered the substance. Hallelujah. The price of consecration. Revelations 18 verse 4. Revelations 18 verse 4. Powerful statement. He said, come out of her, my people, that you will not partake of her sins, that her plague will not come upon you. The Lord is speaking to his bride. He said, come out of her, my people. Come out of that status quo. Hallelujah. And I heard a voice, another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, that ye not receive her plagues. Everybody say, I'm coming out. Refuse it. Refuse it. 
you want to be a man of God, you better, some of you are attracted at the vanities. You, you spend day and night browsing church structures. You believe that is how to be in ministry. Hallelujah. Browsing church structures. And then you finish, you say, this is the car. And you gum it in your room and keep speaking it. The car that will carry me. Look, let me tell you something. Faith is not foolishness. Sit down and pay the price and tell the Lord, search my heart. There are tendencies. I don't know how it will be the day I see 500 members who are loyal to you and can open up their spirit. The price of consecration. You cannot want to live like any other person. I say it with all humility. You will not find me around just gallivanting around. You say, what are you doing? Say, today is a happy day. I just feel like strolling. I'm at the season of my life where I am still at the preparation stage for an extraordinary life. The moment I finish preaching in Koinonia, I run back and lectures continue. I'm in the school of the spirit. No amount of manifestation will stop it. When I go home, I just get on my knees and I say, Lord, I thank you for what you did. I thank you for the mighty things that happened. And the Lord says, let's continue. Well done, but let's continue. The journey is still far. Everybody say, I choose to sanctify myself. Say it, I choose to sanctify myself. There are many things that take our attention in the body of Christ. Computer games. Some of you is movies. You can watch movies from morning. You only stop to eat lunch. Immediately you finish. Which part? Which part? Did I watch that guy? Has, has a lady finally told him yes? Which part? You just come and sit down. The food will burn there. Later I say, off it for me, please. And they ask you, say, what do you want to become? You say, like Benny Hinn. Huh? An extraordinary life. Listen, let me tell you. You must prepare for an extraordinary life. That's why oftentimes God will separate people away. It took Moses in the wilderness. He was alone. The price of consecration. Second Timothy 2. The last scripture. Let's run. Verse 19 to 21. The Bible says, nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The next verse says, but in a great house, there are not only vessels, listen, not only vessels of gold and silver, but vessels of wood and clay, or some versions say earth. It says some are unto honor. That means it's your choice. There are vessels in a great house, but not every vessel is unto honor. He says some are unto honor, and some are unto what? Dishonor. Here's the condition. He says if a man will purge, separate, consecrate, sanctify himself, he said that man will be a vessel unto honor, meet, fit, prepared, equipped for the master's use. Say I'm a vessel unto honor. The price of consecration. The price of consecration. There are many of you, every time you hear the word price, you don't like it. Let's drink ice cream. Hallelujah. Do you have money? No, 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 no. Don't mention it. We, we hate anything that has to do with price. The Bible says, Romans chapter 8 from verse 18. It says, I reckon, I come to terms with this fact. That the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you. That's what the Bible says. I reckon that the sufferings, that means there are temporary setbacks. The sufferings of this present time. What time? The time of your preparation. It's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you. Verse 19 says, for the earnest expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Number two, the price of revelation. 
and real intimacy with the Holy Spirit. You want an extraordinary anointing? This is the second price. The price of revelation. The price of revelation and real intimacy with the Holy Spirit. You will never be able to live an extraordinary life. You can never have an extraordinary ministry. If you do not know the person of the Holy Spirit and you do not have revelation. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17 to 19. Paul began to pray and say for this cause. I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom. And revelation in the knowledge of him. 18 says. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That ye may know. Enlightenment. You want to be great in life. You must go for knowledge. You must go for knowledge. You must go for knowledge. Are you hearing me? You must go for knowledge. You can't be great in ignorance. No. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. It says my people perish for lack of knowledge. Satan is only as powerful as our ignorance will allow him. Success is very predictable when you understand the laws that govern it. Knowledge. Many of us don't go for revelation. You don't contend. You must become a student of the Bible if you want an extraordinary anointing. Are you listening to me? You must become a student, not just a recipient. Many of us want things from God, but we are not serious with the word of God. How amiable are your word, O oh Lord? They are my meditation all day long. I'm obsessed with the word of God. I think the word of God. My conversations are governed after the word. And I'm not just doing it to preach. If you are just preparing sermons, people will know. You can't pretend it forever. He said, thy word, O oh God, have I hidden in my heart. This is how you prepare for an extraordinary life. Be full of the word. Be full of the word. Be full of the word. You want an extraordinary life? Get back to the Bible. Go and sit down. Beyond morning devotion. My son, pay attention to my words. Proverbs 4. Incline your ears to my sayings. The Bible says. Do not let them depart from out of thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. He said they are life to those who find them. That means not everybody is interested. But they are life to those who find them. And health to their flesh. The Bible says forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Hebrews 11 from verse 1. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. He said, for by it, the elders obtained a good report. The Bible says, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. The worlds were framed by the word of God. The price of revelation. People who are extraordinarily anointed are men of the word. When you see a man who is anointed, when I talk of the word, I'm not talking of quoting the word. You will know they submit to the governing authority of the word. Being a student of the word is not just about talking it. There is a way you, you submit. Like you submit to a man. You have submitted to the authority of the word. Many of us read the word, but we have not submitted. To submit to the word of God means the word of God becomes the final opinion in your life. No matter what your argument is, when they bring the word of God, it ends every contention. John 5, 7. Jesus speaking. He says, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you. Very important. His word must abide in you. Hallelujah. It says you will bear much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Hallelujah. John 16 verse 13. Let's look at I'm just giving you these scriptures. John 16 verse 13. Can you look at it very quickly? John 16. God is changing somebody tonight. He said how be it. When he, the spirit of truth, is come. Listen, let me tell you something. 
Koinonia is called intimacy and partnership. The first thing is intimacy. You must contend for the knowledge of the Holy Spirit. It is in the knowledge of the Holy Spirit that you experience the gifts of the Spirit in your life. You cannot have the gifts of the Spirit and the anointing of the Holy Spirit independent of His presence. When He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into how many? That means there are many truths. He will guide you into all of them. It says, For He shall not speak of Himself, but who? Whosoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you. He will show you. Hallelujah. Very important. Let me show you something Jesus said, John 14 verse 10. John 14 verse 10, the second prize, the second key to an extraordinary anointing. I just have four of them. John 14 verse 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father? Now, this was Jesus doing extraordinary works. And these people were dumbfounded. And they wanted the secret of his power. Listen to what he was saying. He says, and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you. He said, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. The Holy Ghost. That source and sustainer that lives in me. He said, he doeth the works. Every time you see a mighty man doing things, he's not the one doing it. There is somebody behind it. I was not born like this. I wasn't born this way. That's my sister. My blood sister. I wasn't born this way. It takes a commitment and a determination. Go for revelation. It's too early to start looking for manifestation. You are at the stage of preparation. No matter how great you are. If you can become, no, even if they make you a pastor of a church, don't let titles make you graduate yourself from the school of the spirit. Go and sit down. Pastor Femi is here. He's the senior pastor in Rema. And you come and sit down quietly. There are many people having his position now who start running. You must learn to sit down. Don't allow the applause that men are giving don't let it see. Don't let it take you away from the school of the spirit. Hear me tonight. There is more. It's time to eat because the journey is far. The angel told the prophet, he said, eat for the journey is far. He ate a little and he slept. The angel woke him again. He said, eat for the journey is far. And the Bible says he ate and he went in the strength of that bread, a 40 days journey. Number three. You want to see an extraordinary anointing in your life. The price of total obedience. Total obedience. Total obedience. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. For time's sake, we will not read it. Just read 5 to 10. Specifically verse 8. If you can project that verse 8. Shut up, Allah, Sends the anointing of the spirit in this place. Philippians 2 verse 8. The Bible says, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became what? Obedient even unto death. Can I tell you something? There is a way you can be obedient that it will cost you. Are you listening to me? You must make up your mind whether you want to obey God or you want to obey men. It will cost you. It's called obedient unto death. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2. It says it shall come to pass. If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. To do and observe all that I command you this day. That these blessings, uh, you know, I, I, will, I will exalt you. shall be above all nations. And these blessings shall come to you and overtake you. Then it begins to list downwards. Hallelujah. Very important. Matthew 7, the Bible says, He that heareth my words and doeth them. Not he that heareth my word and just dances. No. Obedience, 24 to 25. Matthew 7, 24 to 25. It's like to a wise man that built his house upon the rock. I want to challenge you. Many of you, the reason why God is not working with you is because you don't have a heart to obey God. There are some of you here, the day God asks you to empty your account, you will bind and cast and lose and curse. And even write it as a prayer request. That voice, 
that likes taking what God has given me. Obedience. Obedience. Everybody say obedience. Obedience will cost you. Obedience will cost you. They can give you a ministration somewhere. There are great ministrations that I have been given and the Lord says no. No. I just tell the protocol, no, I'm not going. I don't need to tell lies and say, okay, something, uh -uh, I, I'm not going to go. I remember one time, there was a pastor who invited me and I was praying. At the same time, there was an NCCF meeting in Delta. And for three days, I kept seeing myself there. And I had to call him because I had given him my word. They were so excited, they were preparing. I said, pastor, I'm sorry to tell you, but the Lord wants me to be... The Lord wants me to be in Delta. The pastor was so sad. In his mind, he said, so because my church is now not as big as a state conference. That's why you are not coming. No, not at all. I paid my transportation. I went there. And at the end of it, when I got there, the Lord told me, you are not collecting an honorarium. When they bring it, bless it and give them back. So it was not just, it was not for money at all. Obedience. Hallelujah. I've shared it. Well, it, that is not, it's, not necessary. it's not something I'll say now. But somebody brought a huge gift for me one time this year. And when he brought it, I just looked at him. And I told him, I said, mm -mm. as he was, he was trying to offer me, I said, no way. Already God had told me no. How many of you can say no when God says no? How many of you can say yes when God says yes? You are afraid of being different. You are afraid of being criticized. You are not ready for an extraordinary anointing. Because one day, God will tell you to declare his counsel and the fear of what men will say. Let me tell you something. Extraordinarily anointed people are stubborn people. They are men that can defy things. I don't mean rebellious. Mary said, whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. Someone met me one day and said, don't you think meeting once a week is too small for koinonia? I looked at the person I said, back to sender. We don't do things just because we want to do it. No. As you see upon the mount, then you will do. If you do what God did not direct, you will defend it by yourself. Hallelujah. Obedience to the principles of the word. Obedience to the voice of the spirit. Many of us, when we started with God, one of the things that made our spiritual journey well was because we were living by the principles of God. Many of us are waiting for a word from God or a vision or a supernatural experience, but you are not obeying the truth of God's word that you are seeing. You want extraordinary finances. You are not tithing. You're not giving. You see somebody coming every week to give tight. Say, are, are you sure this guy is not pretending it? Are you the only one God is blessing? <laughs> the performance is for obedient people. The performance is not just for hearers. Make up your mind to obey the word. No matter what it will cost you. Hallelujah. Shiva Takata. The last scripture there, Jeremiah 7.23. Jeremiah 7.23. God is separating people in this place to give them extraordinary anointings. He said, but this thing commanded I them, saying, obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people. He said, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. You want it to be well with you, it will be on the wings of obedience. Hallelujah. Years ago, after we came back from our crusade, it was a powerful time. PFN called us and they said, we want you to come and establish a branch of your ministry. They were ready to give us an auditorium and give us pastors to train. 
I was excited. I went to the Lord. The Lord just answered me and said, you will die. That was exactly what I repeated to the people. I said, the Lord said, I will die. Yeah. Obedience. It's difficult to obey when you are going to lose a lot. It's easy to obey when the obedience is on to gaining something immediate. Obedience. I choose to obey the word. I choose to live by his truth. Number four. There are many of you who have done these three. But the fourth key is what you have missed. The price of consistency. The price of consistency. The price of consistency. Look at me. Everybody. How many of you have seen someone cutting a tree? Do you know that if you keep hitting that tree, it looks like nothing is happening. There is one final hit that will cut the tree. That was not the strongest hit. It was the most consistent one. Are you listening to me? Many of us, listen, and let me tell you something. One of the greatest lessons, or yes, one of the greatest lessons that the Lord has taught me in this life is that it pays to wait upon the Lord. Impatience has cheated many people out of the blessings of God in this life. We are in a hurry for everything. Everybody say the price of consistency. Consistently doing the same thing, regardless of the outcome. Regardless of the outcome. You tie it and you don't see the blessing. You say, I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping. I know that God is behind his word. Great people in life are those who have done certain things consistently. Galatians 6 verse 9. Do not be weary in well doing. He said for we will reap in due season if we faint not. Do not be weary in well doing. He said, and let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap. Everybody say, I will reap. Yeah. Some of you have been coming for koinonia again and again. Six months, things have not changed. Do not be weary. If it is what you are doing well, don't be weary. The Bible says you will reap because you are sowing. The only way the devil can kill your harvest is to stop you from sowing. The Bible says, he that sows unto the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life eternal. In 1 Kings 18, from verse 30 to 46, we will not read it, just write it down. 1 Kings 18, verse 30 to 46. The Bible says, Elijah prayed seven times. Everybody say seven times. If Elijah stopped at the sixth time, it would not work. He had to pray how many times? In fact, the Bible is so graphic. It says he prayed the first time. He sent the servant, go and check. The man said, nothing. Oh. Consistency is what separates ordinary people and extraordinary people. Consistency. Consistency. You pray no matter the outcome. You study the word no matter the outcome consistency. Many of us, when we are at the edge, you are at the verge of a breakthrough. That's when many of us give up. Hallelujah. In 2 Kings chapter 5, you read from verse 1 to 4, but let's just focus on verse 4. 2 Kings 5, the Bible says, the prophet had told Naaman, he said, if you want to be clean, go and dip yourself. How many times? Seven times. Naaman was complaining and grumbling. It didn't change him. The Bible says, ah, I thought they were protecting me. Hallelujah. Naaman dipped himself how many times? Don't worry, just do your work, media. Seven times. Do you know what it means to dip yourself? Many of you were baptized. They dip you only once. Imagine a great man. He entered the water. He entered and came out. He asked the slave girl, how many? She said, one. Do it again. He entered, came out. 
At the fourth time, he was already embarrassed. He was looking like mud. God said seven times, Mr. Man, consistency. Consistency. There are many of you, you are looking for a prophet to prophesy to you. Nobody comes. God says, just continue doing what you are doing. That's the only prophetic word you need. Keep doing it. Pastor Chris will say what? How, how does he say it? Keep speaking it. Don't stop saying it. Be consistent. Some of you start preparing for an extraordinary life. And impatience will just cancel it out. How, and you know, see, it's dangerous because when you start a journey, you get to a point where you are in the middle. You, it's too far for you to go back and then you can't reach there. Many of us start the journey and you go back. You are traveling to Abuja. You've now gotten to Abuja Kaduna Expressway. And you say, Kai, this journey is too far. I went to Meduguri on, on road. I slept and woke up. I don't know how many times. I asked the driver how many more hours. He said six or seven. I said, what? We've been on this journey since. I had to sleep on the road. But did that mean we were missing the way? See, that you have to wait does not mean you made a wrong decision. Continue. John 6 verse 15. I mean Joshua 6 verse 15. The crossing of Jericho. Joshua 6 verse 15. The Bible says, on that seventh day, you can imagine, to throw a big wall, God gave them an instruction. They went round once. The people in Jericho were wondering, who are these madmen? They had to die to themselves to know that whatever God tells you to do, it will work. On the seventh day, they now started going one, two, three, four, five. Madness. Six. At the seventh time, they blasted the trumpet. And the Bible tells us, see, the wall of Jericho did not fall down. It sank. Because the Bible says on the wall, five chariots could stand on it. So even if it falls, it will become another wall again. Sank. John 20, verse 11. When I was preparing these notes, I just put all these scriptures. And the Holy Spirit told me, no, there's one more. My people must hear. John 20, verse 11. The Bible says when Jesus resurrected... All the disciples came and the one Jesus loved checked the tomb and they saw that Jesus was not there. They checked once and they ran away. But the Bible says Mary Magdalene stayed there. Everybody say consistency. And when she checked again, suddenly she saw an angel. Consistency. Consistency requires patience. It requires uncommon patience. It requires grace. Hallelujah. Many people in ministry, they start and then God is telling them just be consistent. Don't compromise. Don't compromise. Teach your message. It may not be popular, but don't compromise. If there, if, do you know that is impatience and lack of consistency that makes people to derail from the things of God and get into witchcraft. They are looking for fast, fast fame, fast everything. They want a jeep fast. Fast jeep. One of the greatest revelations that God has put in me is the beauty of patience. I can wait. I've killed hurry from my life. I can wait. Some of you are in a hurry for everything. And this is your unbecoming. You are in a hurry to, you want digital hearing God now. Let you just say, thank you, Jesus. And God just begins to talk. Five minutes later, he has finished. You say, I give you praise. Unfortunately, his system is not like that. They that wait. Hallelujah. Very important. Consistency. These four things are the things that I practice in my own life every time. And I'm determined not to stop it. This last one is probably new to many people. You are just seeing the power of consistency. 
Consistency. When you want to build a house, the workers come every day. They put three blocks today. Tomorrow they come again. They add four blocks. I was checking the database of Koinonia. And I found out we're getting close to 5,000. The database, people who have been blessed, who have come to worship. I remember when we started it, 20 people, new people, 40 people, 20 people today, 100 people, 60 people, 400 people. Consistency. Everybody say consistency. I play a bit of keyboard. When I started, I was fairly consistent. And then I stopped being consistent. Do I like keyboard? Yes. Am I blessed by it? Yes. Can I play like I can? No. Why? You are not consistent. You see why many people are not consistent in God's presence. That's why they don't know when God speaks a thing. Consistency. Consistency. That's why we have a lot of people who are not stable with spiritual things. You run to this man of God today, Abuja or Lagos or wherever. You say, man of God, my life must change. He said, come and sit down under the word. Two weeks later, I said, man of God, it has not changed though. He said, just continue. Say, Tom, let me find one that can give this thing to me sharp, sharp. Many of us have entered into all kinds of things. All kinds of things. Everybody say, I will, I will continue in the things that I've started. Consistency. Let's do a quick review. Number one, the price of consecration. The price of consecration. Number two, the price of revelation. Consecration will kill you. You will take up the agenda of God and forget about your own agenda. There are some of you who finish service. You want to run and go for work. God will say, uh -uh. for you, you are exempted. The normal law is to look for a job. You, you are exempted. You are a lady, you finished. You are just planning, thank God I will get married. God will say, uh-uh, you are going to marry in the next three years. Give me these three years of your life. Say, back to sender. I've always known. Enemy of progress. Now that is my breakthrough. It's my turn to shine. Consecration. You must die to yourself. You can't do everything. There are many of us, every program, secular or Christian, you are there. Something happens in TJ Palace, you come. You are happy. You just sit down there. Later, I say, Kai, it's time for fellowship. Let me run. And you, you wonder why your ears is as if they put cotton wool inside. You can't hear God. You always hear nonsense. Samuel had the voice of God because he was lying down close to the ark. If you lie down close to the ark, you will hear the voice of God. An extraordinary life. I'm saying this today because it will happen by the Spirit. He and I will be an extraordinary ministry. I won't be. I have come to the end of my story. Take over, Jehovah, I have touched the end of my story. Listen, don't be in a hurry in your life. Stop following the plan that people have carved for themselves to define success. You will fall into a ditch you may not recover from. Receive the blueprint. When you see your life becoming strange, it's a sign that there is an uncommon call upon your life. Enjoy it. It's working for others, but when God gets to you, you will train others and raise them, but you, God will say, sit down. There is a reason. You are coming to the end of yourself. I remember one man who God instructed and said until he buys 15 cars for people before he buys one for himself. At the end of the third car, the wife told him, see, I'm going to leave you. I've been keeping quiet about this thing. It's paining me. Because people started embarrassing the woman. They say something is wrong with your husband and you are a foolish woman. You won't go and do something about it. Fifteen. 
That was the instruction God gave him. This guy will walk like an elephant and carry money and buy car. Ejimi's mother of blessed memory. Before she went to be with the Lord, she was preparing to buy a nice car for herself. And then the Lord gave her an instruction that she should buy a brand new Toyota Corolla and go and give one of her junior staff. How many people will slap you when you do that kind of thing? Ladies, if your husband comes and says, Honey, come and give me a hug first and a kiss. And you feel, say, What's, what is it? I can't wait. He said, God has spoken. Say, all right, sit down. Now, we are going to evacuate this house. Say, the spirit of God. The house that you built with your own money. They will call you from the village. Quick, they will say, come back home. Before you come home, they have prepared what will recover you from that mindset. They will say, just drink this before we start talking. Because you are not well. Mad men are the ones who have changed this world. Uncommon people. Uncommon people. Uncommon people. Some of you have to trek long distances to come for koinonia every week. But you are determined. Consistency. Go for revelation. Stop doing cheap ministry. You will start insulting great people. Don't join that group. Stay with the spirit until you catch a substance of life. When you have a message, I promise you the world will hear you. Forget about money. Chase God, you will find other things. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom. And his righteousness and all other things. A time will come if somebody pays you one million per week, he has insulted you. You hold on. If you can endure. He that endures to the end, not stop at the middle. If you start a race, a marathon, and you're running, assuming you're supposed to go around Zaria, you started from ABU, you are almost coming, and you are at, you are at um, energy research, and you collapse there. Will they say, hey, yeah, we understand. We saw your effort. We'll be watching you. When they list the names of those who are disqualified, they will put your name there. So the person who just started from here to aviation and stopped, and you, you have now been put in the same class. Everybody say, I'll be consistent. Say, I'll be consistent. Pray in tongues. It's too early to pray and start saying, oh, I'm looking. It's something. Mm -mm. Koinonia is where we are today because we have been consistent. For four years, God trained us. We're coming every night. People were sitting on the floor. Pastor Williams and his wife with the kids sometimes will come all the way from Sabo. Married people, they will come and sleep in the student's hostel. They are looking for something. Tomorrow now, somebody will see him and the wife will say, how are we sure? This woman said, she's just chopping, ripping where she didn't sow. Somebody spoke against um, Catherine Ma Maria Woodward Eater. She said, the Lord judge you. The person's tongue became like banana. Until he wrote an official letter of apology and she slapped it back. Hallelujah. I was told, was it Oedeko or, or Adeboe, that somebody saw the things that they were doing and the woman just hissed and trivialized it. Oedeko. That woman was barring for I don't know how many years from the story. One time she went to a prophet searching for solution. The man wanted to pray for her and he said, Stop. God is revealing to me that you have offended a great man of God. This is what is responsible. She called the name. The woman packaged a seed. Don't worry. Those who are talking against you will sow into your life for recovery from their madness tomorrow. Just continue. continue. Anytime you see a great man, I was, I was speaking to my sister. You know, she was over at my place and I was talking to them. And I was telling them something. I said, one of the greatest things I've learned in life, listen to me. See, if you try to defend yourself, hear me, you are, God, God doesn't have anything to do again. Are you listening to me? There are many of us, they ju you just pray for five hours, you want to explain to everybody. <laughs> Be convinced about this. 
at every point of your life, those who love you are greater than those who don't. Don't lose touch with those who truly love you and be focusing on a few people. Out of the 12, it was only Judas who didn't love Jesus, not 11. Jesus focused on the people who loved him. Some of us want, who loves me? Do you like me? Do you don't like me? They don't, they don't like me. You say, why now? Let me, let me make you like me. Extraordinary people are lonely people. Lonely people. Until they arrive. And then everybody will see. Moses was alone. They didn't come for visit for him. They didn't send any bounty from Egypt. They thought he was dead. But when God was done with him, it became a sign and a wonder. Are you ready to pray tonight? Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. We are going to cry to the Lord. The Lord is calling you into an extraordinary anointing. Into an extraordinary anointing. We are going to pray for just five minutes. And we'll round up. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Everyone hold your hands together and let's pray in tongues for just one minute. There's a realm, a realm of the extraordinary, the realm of champions. That's where world changers dwell. It's a mountain where the eagles dwell, not where the birds are, not where the chickens are. It's a pedestrian, it's a plane in the spirit. It's the place for mighty men. It's the place for great men. Writers of history. History makers. World shakers. Ambassadors indeed. Men whom the earth is not worthy of. Come on, pray. Se prosko pote kete le bokotia. Se proske bosh. Se kete ke prosko se ke priada. Ale prosko so preska. Re kete keta. Re prosko prete keto la baba baba. Re poto prete le baba baba. Prayer point number one. Lord, I refuse an an ordinary life from today. I make a vow and a commitment. I will not be ordinary. Go ahead. Not in business. Not in leadership. Not in my job. Not in ministry. I contend for an extraordinary anointing. I refuse to be average. Not in ministry. An extraordinary healing ministry. An extraordinary deliverance ministry. An extraordinary preaching ministry. An extraordinary apostolic ministry. Pray. An extraordinary prophetic ministry. Extraordinary evangelical ministry. Pray. I will be an extraordinary worshiper. An extraordinary worshiper. An extraordinary worshiper. An extraordinary businessman. Tell yourself. I am destined to be great. My parents may not know it. Pray. The people in my community may not know it. But I'm determined. I refuse. I refuse the ordinary. I refuse the ordinary. My name will be written in the sands of time that I did terrible things in righteousness. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. You are going to pray all of these four things. Grace to pay the price for consecration. Grace to pay the price for revelation and intimacy. Grace to pay the price for obedience. Grace to be consistent. You know where you have been, you have been faulting. Lift your voice and pray. Grace, oh God. Grace. Grace, grace, shake it, take it, go to palatapa. 
Grace to separate myself from the cares of this world. Grace not to entangle myself with the lusts and appetites that hinder the anointing. Grace, lift your voice and cry. Grace to live a sanctified life. Grace to live a life that is set apart. Grace, grace, pay the price, pay the price. Lamentations 327. It is good that a young man bear his youth, his, his, his yoke in his youth. Pray for grace. Lift your voice and pray. Grace for revelation. Grace for revelation. Say, Lord, grace to be a student of the word. I will buy books. I will buy tapes. Day and night. Day and night. I will sit with the word. Day and night. I will sit with the word. Pray for intimacy with the Holy Ghost. Tell yourself, Holy Spirit, I'm tired of pretending like I know you. I want to enter a tangible experience. I want to hear your voice. I want to walk with you. Koinonia, I long for that intimacy. Pray for grace to obey. Lift your voice and pray for grace. Grace to obey. Lord, I've been disobedient. Lift your voice and pray. Grace to obey. No matter what it will cost you, you will be different. They will mock you. They will criticize you. Every great man followed that path. You are not the first. You will not be the last. Enjoy it. Pass through it. Enjoy it. Pass through it. When you become great, your life will explain the process. Pass through it. Make up your mind to obey God. Be uncompromising. No matter what it will cost you. Finally, pray for consistency. Consistency. Some of you stop doing the things that brought you to this realm. That's why you've not gone higher. Lift your voice and pray. Consistency. I will stop fasting. I will stop fasting. I will stop praying. No. No. Nothing will make me stop fasting. Nothing will make me stop praying. I will stay with the word. I will read books. I will watch videos. I will spend time in worship. I will build myself. I will develop myself. I will learn from great people who have gone ahead of me. I will give my eyes no sleep until I do the things that will move me forward. No matter the commendations, I will let it get into me. I make up my mind to be consistent, to be consistent. The angel of the Lord is standing in this room. I pray right now, every activity of witchcraft, according to what the Lord is showing me, those in this room, right now, in the name of Jesus, I want you to shout, Jesus, right now, one, two, go. Let it be shaken, oh God. Now, 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 Break chains. I command every force 
escape tonight outside at the top of your voice after the count of three many of you will feel fire as if it's just poured on you my god let no spirit let no spirit remain right now one two three All those that have come out, those in front here, as a point of contact to those who are there, by the blood I bring a separation. I bring a separation by the blood now. Now, 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 now. I bring a separation by the blood. The mystery of 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 the blood. Bring the lady. Reshekete bakata gata bakata. Zeko pakata barianda susakata. Ara sheru zakarota hate. Bekete bokoto payata ha. Bekete bokoto. Baria shakarota ha pata. Iya ya. Ela bakos. Barota bekete bokete boya. Hey 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 hey
Hallelujah. The God that we serve is not a dead God. The God that we serve is alive. He can change your life. The God that I serve is a living God. Bring the lady. Bring her. For the light shines in the darkness. Let her go now. You know my voice. Out. Now. Leave her. Out. Never return again. Now all the devils here. At the count of three, your exit comes. You hear my voice. I speak to you from the realm of the spirit. One, two, so go, 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 go. Out, 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 out. You must go by the power of the Holy Ghost. Go, go, go. Be free. I set you free. Marital delay. Give me your hands. With a loud shout, out you go. Now. Let her go now. You are a wicked spirit. Out. I see you in the spirit. Go. Go. Out of her. Now. Go now. Let her go now. You are a wicked spirit. Out. Come out now. In the name of Jesus Christ. The serpent and spirit. Your time is over. Go. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Listen. Some of you are not out here, but there are things that are already parting ways with you. Are you getting my point? I want to rebuke delay. Many of you do not know the danger of delay. If you are not experiencing any delay, no problem. But I'm just flowing as the spirit of God. Where is your sister? Bring her. Sister, where are you? Please come and stand here. Your breakthrough has come. Marital delay, it will die now, at once. Hold my hands. Look at me. Just look at me. All right, then. You will leave her never ever to return to her again by the power of the Holy Ghost. Right now, I challenge you. Sedekete palakata Something will leave you right now. I'm seeing you tied in the spirit. Marital delay. Go! Never to return. Lay your hands on your stomach. They will never say you have a fibroid. I cause that spirit. It's a family thing. Hold her. This is a family thing. May they be free, O oh God. Bring salvation to this family right now. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I set you free. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I tell you, the devil hates this prayer. Because if he can get you to experience delay, you will give up on your faith. There are many of you, there are levels you would have entered right now. Bring this lady. Yes, come with her. You just clear the way for them. Let me just touch her head. Well done, ushers. Let her be free. Let her go. Together with the delay. Listen, lift your hands, everybody. Outside, lift your hands. I'm about to challenge the spirit of delay. You can't move forward because something is tying you down right now. In the name of that is above every other name. Every delay in this place, at the count of three, I command the devils, be gone right now. One, two, three, go, 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 go. I cause delay. I cause delay. I cause delay. Where is the woman I where is the woman I spoke about? One mama that was here. How are you, madam? You, you came alone? Where are they? Come, come. Who are those that came with mommy? Bring this woman here. Sorry, just take it easy so they don't. Tonight is a night of breakthrough. Where's the daughter?
I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. God is going to visit you. This is witchcraft. Eh? Madam, this is witchcraft. I'm not going to go into any long story, but I need to pray for you. Do you believe that? This is your daughter. Yes, sir. How are you, my dear? I'm going to pray for you. Hold my hands. I'm seeing you tie. Tie. This is this is acute witchcraft. Where are you from? From Edo. Edo State. Yes, sir. Hold my hands. And I always find my spirit in the village. Ah, uh -uh, now hold on. Why you? I want to. It's just that I didn't want to talk to you. See, let me tell you something. Huh? The Lord is ministering to me, and I'm seeing something that looks like a shrine. Are you listening to me? I'm seeing something that looks like a shrine in your village. When you sleep in the night, they call your spirit. Is that true? Yes, sir. Just if I'm lying, just yes, say I'm sir. lying. Yes, sir. When you sleep, where do you see yourself? I when find myself in the village. You find yourself in the village. Yes. This is what I'm seeing. They are invoking her spirit. This is what that that witch doctor tried to do to the spirit of Saul. You see that in the Bible. These people are necromancers. You will be free tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I pray for you? He is risen from the dead. He is Lord. Madam, look at me. Can you shout? If I ask you to shout, can you shout? I want you to shout Jesus at the top of your voice. Can you do that? Go ahead. Let her go now. Let her go now. Out. An end comes. I command breakthrough. Let this family change. Don't cry. Can I pray for you? Father, let this lady experience breakthrough. This is part of the... Eh? Is, you are the one that brought her. Celebrate this lady, please. You see why it's a blessing, madam? You feel pain, at, used to feel pain at your back. Eh? You came here sick. Look at, you came here sick now. Come and walk. Let me see where the sickness is now. Don't worry, come up. Just come up. Check yourself. Check, do what you couldn't do. Check whether the pain is there. Do what you couldn't do. Just do, check. I was already healed, yes. You were what? I was already healed. You were already healed be calling me to come for this program. I couldn't come. Even when I was in the shop, my daughter said, Mommy, come. I kept a seat for you. When you enter, the Holy Spirit said, that is the man that will deliver you. I gave my life to Christ 20 years ago. But there is battle. I always complain, why am I seeing my spirit in the village? And anything will touch me with my husband, they touch me. I went to, even when you are preaching, you say some people will go to from me, church to go and receive miracle. I went to, the last one I went to, I weep. I gave money. I cooked to this woman. He says she's a prophet. You cook for the prophetess. Who cook? And after I left the place, after I left the place, he just damaged my image. Was just say different things about me, and I'm not like that. And God did it for me today. I'm the king. Give Jesus praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are the one that brought her. Are you her daughter? She's your neighbor. What do you want God to do for you? I just want to get admission. That's all. Admission? Yes. Where? Into Edo University. Have you written jam? No, no. You are writing next week. No. Hold my hands. My God. In the name that is above all names. We give you admission in this place now. The God who is bigger than any registrar bigger than any senate you will come back and stand right here and testify you have it in the name of jesus christ now no power will stop you 
I use this as a point of contact to everyone who is going to be writing jam, whether for you or for your loved ones. I tell you the truth and I lie not. See, listen. Prophecy. Kaya, jaja. Reketera. Mambre. Tetekete. Balakata. Rotosepa. Every power that says you will not be admitted in the name that is above all name. Receive your admission. Receive your admission. Receive your admission. Receive your admission. I provoke it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive your admission. Listen, whether you know what you are writing or not, May my God hold your hands. That oh, hand, that Lord, oh, 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 Nene, Nene, who says it, if I be a servant of God, may my God hold your hand. Listen, many of you do not know the power of prophecy. Prophecy is not just about speaking. It creates the scene for your breakthrough to happen. Give me her hands. She was coming to fight me. No. All right, you must leave. No, don't put it in. <laughs> Hold on. You must let her go. In the name of Jesus, the Christ. Out! You're a wicked spirit. By the power of the blood. Go now! Don't waste our time here. Now. Thank you, Jesus. Be thou enthroned on high. Enthroned. Help me worship us. Be thou and Marriage. We are going to visit the issue of marriage right now. Please, I want you to listen. I'm just flowing as the Holy Ghost is giving me grace. Sister, look at me. Just look at my eyes. You must release her right now. It's time for you to go. Out you go. Now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I set you free. Let it leave you now. Let it leave you now. Whether 
whether it's for yourself or for your loved ones, I want you to stand and agree right now. I'm about to command that spirit that causes late marriage. Please take it very serious. This is a miracle service. Don't say it doesn't concern you. And all I want you to do is just to shout amen. All the spirits that come to molest you and molest your loved ones and cause them not to get married in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That name that is above every other name. In the name that is above all names, I pray right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Please get said, something mighty will happen in this place now. Every spirit that says there will not be marriage by the sword of Elohim right now, as you shout Jesus, they will depart from you now. One, two, go. Every marital delay. Go, 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 go. Let marriage, spirit, husband, out in the name of Jesus. I prophesy to you. May your life partner come into your life. I prophesy. I call for your life partner, supernatural marriage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A lady has been healed of chest condition outside. Check yourself and run out here. Check, it looks like ulcer. You just feel something leave you. Please check and run quickly, quickly. Come and let God seal your miracle. The Lord just minister to me. Please check, check. Hallelujah. I'm about to pray for the sick right now. Every infirmity bows to the name of Jesus. God has healed a lady. A lady. Is that the lady? Another one, come. Come, you've been healed. When God speaks to one, he speaks to many. Look at, just one prophetic word. Give them the mic. Is it working? What happened to you? Just tell us quickly. I just felt a thing leave my chest. You felt something leave you. Yeah. Do what you couldn't do before. I felt it leave my chest. Completely. Hold my hands. Never returns. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go forever. Come, what happened to you now? I've been having this burning pain here. You've been having burning I pain. How long? For I've how long? I've been on drugs for over two weeks now. You've been on drugs? Yes. Uh -huh. drugs even if it's even in my bag right now. The drugs is go and bring yes. it. Talk to her. What happened? Please tell us. A sharp pain left me. A sharp pain right now just disappeared. Come on. Are you celebrating Jesus? Look at the drugs. These are the drugs you take. In the name that is above all names. Hold the drugs. Just hold it. Hold it. Look at me. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are perfecting her. She will not need these drugs again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Check yourself. God is healing more people with this kind of pain. If it's happening to you, come out right now. Come out. God is healing people. All stars. All stars are going right now. Okay, she's been healed. God bless you. It's perfected in Jesus' name. Talk to me. I've been having this pain of chest. Please make sure you don't tell lies. For the past two years now. For the I've past been two years now. I've been two years. Chest pain. Chest pain. Yes, sir. Anytime okay. I try to breathe, it will hold. It will when you try me. to breathe, it will hold it you. It will hook me. Uh huh. Sometimes I'll be crying, praying. My mom said that it is over. But I've been going to hospital to collect drugs because I 
told my mom I couldn't, I can't take any drugs again. But I believe that God will heal me one day, one time. What happened right now? When he said that, check. And when you prayed, I felt that I felt that something is out of me. And now I'm really breathe. Do breathe in deep. Any pain? No, Any sir. pain? No, sir. Just keep breathing. The power of God is coming on you. Lord, let that be the end of it in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Perfection in the name of Jesus Christ. Come. All right. I've been having this chest pain for over two years and six months. Two years, six months. Pain. My big brain is just pain. Okay, pain. breathe in now. Breathe in right now. What happened to you right now? Complete pain. Hold my hands. Lord, it never returns to him again in the name of Jesus Christ. Since 2006. Yes, and different Peptic different. ulcer. You are sure, confirmed. Yes. Okay. And last week, the pain started coming back again, and the pain was so severe. At night, it doesn't allow me to sleep at night. But as we were outside and we shouted Jesus, I felt. You felt something. Yes. That so wicked I thing that has sat there, he must pack his load and leave this night. I felt. Hold my hand. I use this as a point of contact to every area of your body. That whatever has not been planted by my God lives your life forever. If you have problem in your eyes, God is going to heal all kinds of eye problems right now. Lay your hands there, please. I want to pray. Lay your hands. Please believe. Thank you, Jesus. When I pray for you, check yourself. And if you see a miracle, run out here. Even if you see that it has started, please don't tell lies. We are not playing gimmicks here. Some of you think it's an eye problem. But it's a demonic thing. I'm about to command it to leave you. Thank you, Jesus. Even itching in the eyes will leave. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I command... Eyes be healed. Be healed. Now. Be healed. Be healed. Every blind eye open. Every blind eye open. Partial blindness be gone. In the name of Jesus. Long sightedness. Short sightedness. Glaucoma. Every eye condition. Be healed now. Please be checking yourselves. Check yourselves. God is doing miracles now. Check yourself. If you have any growth in your body, please check yourself. As you see God touching you, come out. You, I tell you, God is healing people. If there is any growth in any part of your body, what's wrong with him? Eye problem. Bring him. God is healing people. Look at, look at a miracle. Look at a big miracle. Look at, look at this. Look at this. Look at what is happening to these people. Look at, eyes are opening. Come on, give Jesus praise. Eyes are opening. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Every kind of eye condition. Hallelujah. We we'll take the testimony. Check yourself. Don't let the devil stop you. What's, his, what's the problem with him? Look at this. You can't. Eh? Praise the Lord. No, 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 no. There's no time for that. What is wrong with him? There's completely yes who brought him here his mom. We came together with him. mama okay i'm going to pray for him as i pray for him keep testing him when he can see you just try him out the lord will heal him lay your hands on your no no let, let him lay his hands on his hand lay your hands by yourself on your eyes i command new eyes by the power of the christ how long has this been does she speak English? Huh? One year, two months. One year, two months. Yeah. What happened to him? Uh, it was glaucoma. It's glaucoma. So we went to the hospital and the doctor told me that he could not cure me, that she go meet any man of God to heal me. That he cannot help you. Yeah, so I'm from Zankwa in Zankwa, local government. So I had you, this You came program. all the way from Zankwa? Yes, sir. Oh my God. Jesus healed his eyes. Glaucoma, I command you to be gone. Bow to the name of Jesus. Bow to the name of Jesus. 
I command his eyes to open right now. Open right now. Please check him. Test him. See, test him. Test him. Just test him if he's seen anything. Can you say, don't be afraid. This is a factory. Just test him. Sister, stand up. What is the, eh? You saw light. What, are you seeing, oh my God, look at how this guy's eyes is so damaged. Huh? Can you see anything? I can't see. Look the at The only thing I saw was the light went through and it went. You saw off. light? Yeah, when he just finished praying. So I just opened my eye, then it went off again. Okay, just keep looking at me. Please don't give up, all right? Get him a seat. Just keep looking at me. What happened to you? I saw a sharp light in my eye. You saw a sharp light. You see the same light again? Yes, a sharp light. You've been using glasses. I've been using glasses over two and a Who half knows years her? now. Who knows her? Ah, okay. You all know. Who is your roommate? Roommate, where are you? Come now. Roommate, when we say roommate, where are you? You come out. You know her? So that you don't come out. You see, you know why we are doing this? Because of the stupidity around the body of Christ. Some people now can think that this is stage managed. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why we are calling the roommate. Do you know me? Huh? No, what I mean is, do I have a personal relationship with you? What happened now? Tell us the truth. I saw a sharp light in you my eyes. A sharp and light. I, I, I fell down. And then you fell under yes. the anointing. For, for two and a half years, I can't concentrate for long. I can't read for more than one hour. Tears will just start falling off my eyes. Each until you use glasses. Yes, until Give I us use something glasses. to read. Something tiny. Bible. Where are those small, small Bibles? Read Isaiah 60, verse 1 and 2. I'm holding your glasses. Arise and shine, for the light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Come on, give Jesus praise. I see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Who brought this boy? Okay. Uh, How are you? Fine, sir. Okay. Wait, hold on. Let's hear the boy. Who brought him? I come alone. Alone? Yes, okay. Sir. He's old enough to respond now for himself. Is that true? Okay. What happened to you? I Please make sure we verify this. I food. was praying from outside. Okay. Something entered me. So as, as I fell down, an hand come here. Now I, I, I can't feel anything again. You then can't? later, somebody hold me. Before I know, something started began working on my stomach. Something started working in your stomach. Yes, How sir. do you feel now? Was he blind? What was wrong? I Please feel check. better. You feel better. Yes, you were sir. sick. What was wrong with you? I was suffering stomach ache. Stomach ache. Yes, sir. Lay your hands. It must be perfected right now. Lay, hold me with one hand. You will see something moving and that will be the end of it. Thank you, Jesus. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Who brought this small boy? I brought myself. You brought, eh? I brought myself. You brought yourself. Ha! Could you speak English when you were his age? What's your name? My name is Victor. Your name is what? Victor. Victor. <laughs> you mean they allow little children to come on their own like this? He's, he lives around or he took transport? No, I came with my parents. Oh, you came with your parents? Yes. Oh, beautiful. Yes. What was wrong with you? My eyes were itching me. Your eyes used to itch you? Yes. And then what happened? But now I can't feel it again. You can't feel it again? <laughs> to the shame of the devil. Father, let this be perfected in the name of Jesus Christ. Who else? Who else? Please. Only eye conditions. Okay. Priscilla, I had this itchy eyes and it's always bringing out tears. The doctor recommended glasses, but I didn't go back to the doctor because okay. I didn't want to use them. But there, something hit my stomach and my eyes. Where? When I was standing over when there. When you were standing there. Who saw her? Is that true? Okay. Yes, sir. So I and it's gone. Up. Yes. Praise the Lord to the shame of the devil. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is perfected never to return again. From the beginning of this month, I've been having this 
I don't know, every time I read, I skip the word or I just go blank. I don't know why. And it started from January. You what? I skip the word. Like when I start reading, I just skip the word or I just go blank. I don't know what happens to me. What and you today, go blank? Epileptic yeah. or something? Today I was in class and my, I was, we were reading. My friend was asking me, what's wrong with me? I'm reading the word. I'm mixing the word. I'm like, it started since this year. And she's like, okay, I need glasses. I'm like, I don't need glasses. Oh, when you are reading, yes. the, you will be skipping yes, the I'll words. Yes, I'll skip the word. I'll go blank, and I don't know why. What happened to you now? When we were praying, I laid my hands on my, ha my, hands on my eye, and then a light just, just hit me, and my hands touched me. Light shaking, again, you see the and light? And my eyes got very hot, and then Your I eyes got open, hot, yes. And you felt it open. open. To the shame of the devil, it will never come back again. Read Isaiah 51, just verse 1 and 2. Let's and see. Came to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock whence ye are penned, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bear you. For I call him alone, and, and blessed, I blessed him, and, blessed him, and, I and increased, increased him. him. God bless you. It never returns in Jesus' name. You too. Come. Okay. It started 2011. Um, I was having a pain in my eyes and an itch. So it, I feel like um, each time it comes, I feel heaviness in my eyes. You feel heaviness so in your eyes. So when I went to Chica, they told me it's sterigium. That is mostly sterigium. That is, I'm not supposed to suffer. It's like um, it's prominent among um, old people. So and when I went, they prescribed some medications for me. I went, I went five what bottles. Right now? So, but while the prayer was going on, I felt that heaviness was released from my eyes. M completely. Yeah. You feel any pain now? No. It's gone completely. Yeah. May it be perfected in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray. Sweetheart, how are you? Yeah. What's your name? Mercy. We have brilliant children in Koinonia. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us smart children. You came on your own. Brought oh, me. your sister brought you. What was wrong with you? Eye your eye used to eat you. Is he eating you now? What happened? When they were seeing me, I put my hand. You played your hand on your eyes. Uh huh. I saw that the thing had gone. Completely. Lord, in the name of Jesus, may it never return. In Jesus' name. All right, the last person. Okay. That my eyes sometimes used to pain me. So, uh, me and my mother, we went to see the, they said that I needed glasses. Okay. But since that day, my mother and I never went. So, sometimes uh, my eyes would be itching me. I would okay. like start, start feeling sleepy. But now it has gone. But now it has gone completely. Thank you, Jesus. May it never return again in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, while... The worship team just leads us in a powerful session of worship. I want you to line up all the sick people, especially if you came here from outside Zaria, please let's give you priority. Just come out quickly and then the rest join them. Please, you came with a sick person, now is the time to heal, to, to, uh, to, for them to receive their healing. Very, very quickly, please, we have a lot to do, time is not on our side. Very quickly, very quickly, worship team, please help us. Hallelujah. Please bring them out quickly. Line them up very quickly, please. Help them. Protocol ushers, direct them. Please, let's save time inside and outside. If you are sick, whether you are outside Zaria or not, just come. Please, come out. Now is the time for you to be healed. Thank you, Jesus, for your healing power. Those of us who are seated, begin to pray in tongues, please. My Don't be distracted. He can move now. That mountain of sickness will be moved right now. Whatever it is. Please keep coming quickly. Come and line, line yourself. As you come, just be praying and say, Lord, this is it. I am parting with this sickness.
hide me from the rain. Say, my God, Say my God heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weakened. Forever he will reign. My God is I pray for you. Just begin to check yourself. Begin to check yourself. Let's pace them very quickly. Hallelujah. As I pray for you, please, I want you to believe. I already sense the healing anointing very strong on my hands. And as I pray for you, you'll be healed. You'll be delivered. No matter what it is, please, don't go back the same. You don't have to go back the same. You do not have to go back the same. No matter what the issue is, I want you to know that you are parting with this sickness right now. Thank you, Jesus. Take the book. Lord, I give you praise. In the name of Jesus Christ.
He has what? What's the wait? Hold on. What's the issue? He was using a bike. And the leg broke. Wait. You don't try to lift him. This guy had an accident. Look I at me. Since I when? I think a week ago now. You can't walk. The the nurse bandaged my leg. Then what happened? I started. I couldn't walk very well again, so I removed the bandage. Why did you remove the bandage? Because pulse was going out. Pulse was going out of the leg. Yes. Where is it? Ah, goodness. Look at this. Look at me, brother. Look at me. He's paining you now. Look at me. Just stretch the leg. Look at me. It's a demon. This is not accident. Thank you, Jesus. Look at everybody is seeing it. I'm happy you're seeing it. Show them, please. Put it on the screen. Now let this leg be healed right now. Right now. In the name of the Christ. Can you see the guy has suddenly become relaxed? This is somebody that could not sit down. Something affected the bone in the accident. I joined this bone back. Now. Who is a witness that he really had the accident? Who knows? You saw him limping when he came. Okay. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Something is happening to you. Thank you, Jesus. I fixed this leg right now. Within days, this thing will dry up. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Walk. Walk. Come. Come. Walk. Come. Come. Walk. Do what you couldn't do. Just do what you couldn't do. Don't. Don't. Just do what you couldn't do. See, he's surprised. He's shocked looking at his leg. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Give Jesus praise. Thank you, Jesus. Look at look at this. Look at what hold on. See the guy, what is happening to you? The leg is drying up. The leg is drying up. Drying you up. are feeling it now. Yes. Everybody clear the way for him. Rush, go and come back. Walk, go and come back. Go down there and come back. Look at this guy could not walk. He had an accident with this leg. Come, walk as fast as you can. Walk as fast as you can. Look at the boys crying. Look at this.
lift your hands and thank the Lord. No man can do these things except God be with you. This is not for the glory of any man. Lord, we give you praise for that which you are doing in our midst. This leg dries up in the name of Jesus Christ. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the fire.
injection. It spoils the leg. Which of them? The right. You've never been able to use it. No, except if it's except if an age. Try to make it. Just wait. Which one? Which of them? Try to make it. Eh? Just do what I'm telling you to do. Try to stamp it. Without this, eh? not far. But can you walk without this? Short feet. Very short feet. Mm. Can you try right now? Sure. Do you think you can? Hold my hand. Just try. Stand up. Look at me. If anybody supports you, if someone supports you, will you be able to? If nobody supports you, can you walk? You will fall. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Try to walk. Stand up. Hold my hands. That devil of diabetes. It's time for you to leave now. Hypertension. You are a spirit. I command you out of her life and out of her family. Mommy be healed now. Now. Everything you have put in her stomach and out you go now. Now! Did you bring your prayer requests? Please start passing them quickly. Look at me. God is healing you right now. The power of God is going through your hands. You're being healed right now. Just pass your last, pass the request to the last person at the side. Outside, please do the same thing. Let's save time. Everything you have written on this request will be answered in the name of Jesus. Please pass it, pass it quickly.
Please pass the request quickly. Just leave her. Lord, she's totally free. attending to those outside those outside please let's have their request I hope there's a way of getting the ones on fa on Facebook and all of that if we can't we can just reach out to them by faith please make sure that you have a prayer request God answers prayers here yeah. everybody rise if you can please this is a very prophetic moment please we'll start praying the rest can come and join us the others pastor Praise God. Listen, please understand that this is not a religion that is done every miracle Sunday. This is done on instruction and this is biblical. The Bible says when Ezekiah was threatened, he took the threat letter before God on the altar and dropped it there. Are you getting my point? These requests have threatened the lives and the families of many of us. That's why we are bringing it before God and we are saying, Lord, if you do not step in, nothing can be done. But I want you to know that within the next five minutes or thereabout, as we begin to prophesy and lay hands on this, the angel of the Lord's presence will go to different families, different places, and begin to work miracles. Hallelujah. So all you're going to do is just stretch your hands here and be praying in tongues 
while the worship team leads us in worship, just keep worshiping as they pray in tongues. Is that okay? Please go ahead. Unto you that answers prayer will all flesh come. My God, in the name of Jesus, we trust you. Stretch your hands, O God, and visit your people. Stretch your hands, O God, and visit your people. Stretch your hands, O God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands, O God. Lord, let impossible miracles happen. We bring this before the altar. That which threatens the Christian experience of your people. My God, I pray that every request here be turned into testimonies. Let there be deliverances, O God. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, Saraprake Shalima Zatala Broki Jilibana Zataya, Rika Lujari Krasatata Pata Shitaba, the God of all flesh, Zarapakata Shilia. Lazarika Patasha with the glare, Lazata Patasha, the one that parted the Red Sea, Raka Patashi Talaba, Ribi Zuri Brani Nekoto Shitalaba. Do the impossible right now. Do the impossible. Do the impossible. Do the impossible. You break upon the rings and you part it into two. Do the impossible right now. Behold the request of your people. Behold their heart desires. Let there, let there be miracles now. Intervene now, intervene now, intervene now in the name of Jesus. We declare where, where there seems to be no way right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, as a, as a result of an intervention, let there be influx of testimonies, testimonies, testimonies in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. That which was impossible with men, oh God, will they will declare that with this request, oh God, let, the, let there be possibility right now in the name of Jesus. Miracles, miracles, open doors in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God, for your great intervention. Thank you, mighty God, for the great turnaround. Bless Sabina them forevermore. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Celebrate Jesus. We command that these requests be turned into testimonies. In the name of Jesus, let there be mighty miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please everyone stand. Everywhere, please stand. About to prophesy into our lives. Lay your hand on her chest. Out now. Release her and go. Now! Hallelujah. A 
And he said to me, prophesy. And I prophesied as I was commanded, not as I wanted. I prophesied as I was commanded. And there was a sound, a rattling sound. And bones began to be joined to bones. And he said unto me, son of man, prophesy to the four winds. And I prophesied, O wind, breathe upon this slain. And the wind came and breathed upon the slain, and there stood an exceeding great army. I want to prophesy over your life. I want you to shout amen at the top of your voice. Please believe it. Prophecy is creative. Hallelujah. Please play strings. Thank you, Father. Because you always hear me when I call. Lord, as I prophesy over your people, let it not be a ritual, I pray. Nothing will happen if your power does not make it happen. Therefore, I pray that the angels that confirm the words of his messengers, may they back this word and bring it to pass. Let this word become your word, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let this word become your word, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let this word become your word, O God. And Melchizedek blessed Abraham and said, Blessed be Abraham, son of the Most High, possessor of the heavens and the earth. And the prophet said in Samaria, By this time tomorrow, by this time tomorrow, the Bible says, Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. By a prophet, he brought them out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. He says, he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Do the impossible. Do the impossible. I'm not singing. Just concentrate. My God, would you step in and do the impossible? Do the impossible. Change the unchangeable. Change the unchangeable. My God, step in to the impossible. To the impossible. Please lift your hands. In the name that is above all names. The name that causes demons to tremble. The name that causes breakthrough and deliverance. I command right now. Let there be supernatural restoration for everything that you have lost. Restoration now. Restoration now. Restoration by the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive restoration. Everything you have lost, for whatever reason it was lost, I command restoration of opportunities in the name of Jesus. Restoration of destiny help us. Restoration 
of the years that the canker worm has eaten. Now, hallelujah. Every handwriting against your destiny that has said 2014 will be a year of frustration in the name that is above all names. Be cancelled now. 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 book of Job he says in six things will he deliver you yea in seven things and one of them is the scourging tongues of men when men sit down and make enchantment in the name of the God that I serve every cause every pronouncement over your life because now because now, because now, because now. For he has broken the gates of brass. And he has cut the irons in sunder. My God, I pray. Every door that has been closed over your people. In the name that is above all names. If God be in this place. I command those two leaf gates. Be open now. Be open now. I prophesy, be open now. By the power of prophecy, be open now. Everyone called jobless in this place. In the name that is above every other name. Satele kabande kretisakai. Ashetete balakata bregede balada bagada bagada. Is there any man in the house of Saul? that I may show him kindness. And they brought Mephibosheth, a man who was not qualified, but the favor of God made him to sit at table with David. I pray by the favor of God, wherever you need favor for jobs, I prophesy, receive it now. Receive it now. From the north to the south, to the east, to the west, I command jobs. Every man that has said over his dead body for you to move forward, may his prophecy come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to break that power that limits men. Every limitation, every embargo that has been placed over your life that is said thus far, have you come? I speak from the heavens in the name of Jesus. Limitations be lifted now. Be lifted now. Be lifted now. I command break records. Break records, set new records, do what has not been done. I pray for everyone whose family member is overdue to be promoted. The Bible says, withhold not good from who, him who is due when it is within your power to do so. It is within their power to bring the promotion. Therefore, I pray in the name that is above all names. 
we enforce that promotion now we enforce it now everything that has died in your life hear ye the word of the Lord come alive now dead relationships come alive now I pray for your academics for he has given me the tongue of the learned that I may know how to speak the word in due season to him that is weary he said my tongue is the pen of the right the ready writer my heart has indicted a good matter yea I speak of excellent things Daniel was made ten times better he said I will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece that your enemies will not be able to resist nor gain say that when you stand before them you shall not think of what to say for in that very hour it will be the spirit of your father speaking I pray everyone called doll I change that testimony now everyone on probation we take you out of it now we take you out of it now everyone on probation we take you out of it now every missing script every injustice done to everyone I command the angel of the Lord to go to every department every faculty let justice be done in the name of Jesus and everyone that has vowed that you will not graduate in the name that is above all names we graduate you right here we graduate you right here in the name of Jesus Christ we graduate you right here that cause of hardship that is upon our families they walk like elephants and eat like ants tonight in the name that is above all names let that cause of hardship be lifted let it be lifted I speak to every job here receive increase I speak to every business here grow I command you to grow I speak to every ministry expand and break levels in the name of Jesus Christ let the favor of God that can mark you and distinguish you among your peers I prophesy may that mantle of favor hit you where you are in the name of Jesus Christ may that favor hit you where you are in the name of Jesus May that favor hit you where you are. May that favor change you. May it cause men to bless you. Hallelujah. And I pray, may the presence of God go with you. Everywhere you go, everyone struggling with any habit here that is not of God, pornography, masturbation, whatever it is, it ends here tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. It ends here tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. It ends here tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Every dead spiritual life. Every dead prayer life every dead word study life in the name that is above all names come alive now receive the fire for prayer take it take it take it take it take it take it the fire for prayer take it the spirit of prayer and supplication take it let it come upon you 
like a tornado in the name of Jesus. Grace to pray, grace to study, grace to understand. Hallelujah. Every hidden gift, every hidden talent, every ability that can bless you, that has refused to arise, I pray. The Bible says the gift of a man makes room. I pray every hidden gift that the devil has buried, I prophesy, let it come alive and bless you now. Let it come alive and bless you now. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. When I cry for lifting, thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. One more time. Thank you for lifting. 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 Thank you for lifting my head. Hallelujah. Please remain standing. There are people here tonight who are saying, I'm tired of my life. I'm tired of living my life the way I want. I need to surrender my life to a God that is higher and greater than me. Some of you have probably given your heart to the Lord. Please listen. But tonight Jesus is calling. You may have a Christian name. That's not the same as salvation. You may even be a pastor. That's not the same as salvation. Tonight the Lord is calling many of you who have been living your lives your own way to relinquish that hold and surrender it completely. I'm going to make an altar call. Just one to five. I want you to run from outside, from inside. Please run like your life depends on it. You are saying, Lord, I am tired. Take it. Take it. It is yours and I'm giving it back to you. I am tired of living life my own way. I have done my best. I relinquish that whole one. Please rush quickly. Celebrate them as they come. Two. Just come and as you stand here, just begin to pray. And say, Lord, take over. Take over. That's the song. God bless you. You are saying, Lord, I surrender everything. I've been living my life the way I want. But tonight, I'm in business with you. Four. Please don't let anybody stop you from coming. Don't let the devil say you are too far. Start running from there. Young and old. Join us. If you are coming, please keep running. Don't let the devil stop you. Don't let your friend or your family members stop you. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you for all those coming. Thank you for that bold step. Don't let your friends stop you. Thank you. Our mother is coming. God bless you. God bless you. No matter how old, no matter how young, Jesus is calling you tonight. God is still speaking to you. You are saying, Jesus, take everything. Take over. I'm tired of living my life my own way. To you. I salute every one of you for coming. Don't make this an emotional decision. Mean it from the depths of your heart. No matter what you have done wrong, no matter how you've lived your life, I want you to know that there is a fountain that flows from Emmanuel's veins. 
and that fountain flows to bless you. It flows to wash you. It flows to cleanse you. Lift your right hand and say this from the depths of your heart. Please, you are not reciting a poem. This is between you and the Lord Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come before you unable to help myself. I ask you to help me. Cleanse me. Wash me with your precious blood. I truly repent of my sins. In the name of Jesus, I receive eternal life into my spirit from today. No backsliding. Some of you, as you are praying this, I tell you, the power of the devil will be broken. All of the chains. You're going to say, Satan, I denounce you right now. Take your hands and live my life. I declare that I'm saved. I'm a child of God. The Lord will use me to do mighty things for his glory. I cut away from wrong associations and everything that takes your place in my life. From today, I'm sold out and totally surrendered. Now keep your hands lifted. Father, bless these ones. You have brought them, used them mightily. Let the power of sin be broken in their lives. Let the power of the grave be broken. Let the power of the flesh be broken. Anoint them and use them mightily, oh God. Let this not be an emotional decision. Let this be a genuine decision. In the name of Jesus, make mighty men out of them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Congratulations. I want you to look at me. I congratulate you for this great decision. Everyone here made this decision at one point. Now, I'd like you to just follow our ushers. There's a wonderful sister waving her hand. I want you to just follow them. They'll have, they'll give you some information and they'll meet with you tomorrow. God bless you. Please follow them. Follow them very quickly, please. All those worshiping with us for the first time, if this is your first time here at Koinonia, we love you. Please leave your seat and run out here quickly and let us pray and speak a word of blessing. God bless you. If this is your first time, wherever you are, just run and come. There is a special blessing for you. Don't wait for your neighbor. You are the first person. Koinonia, is this the best you can do for them? Thank you. Thank you for coming. We celebrate you. We honor you. We thank you. Keep coming. Don't stop. We have a prayer for you and we have a blessing. And all those who took the pain to invite anybody here, may God invite all the blessings you need in your life. I'm very serious. I'm not just saying it. If anyone came here as a result of your invitation, I pray that my God will invite every good thing and every good person into your life in Jesus' name. Thank you for coming. This is Koinonia. We love you. We bless you. I believe you are blessed tonight. You will never be the same in the name of Jesus Christ. Prophesy upon their lives, Koinonia. Bless them. We speak the blessings of the heavens upon your life. We bless you with the blessings of the house. We bless you with prosperity. We bless you with hunger for the things of the spirit. We bless you with wisdom and revelation and understanding. We bless you with grace. We bless you with the power of the Holy Spirit. May you experience the life of God in a new dimension. May God plant a hunger for spiritual things in you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you once again for coming. We love you. We're always here Fridays. And I assure you that your life will never be the same. Please, you'll follow the ushers. They'll have your details. They'll welcome you more on our behalf. And you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. Thank you very much. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Thank you for coming. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye.
Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline. 